Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. What do you do when you get 13 of the exact same graphics card in your office at the same time? Well, first you maybe try to sell them. We didn't do that. We actually gave away 10 of them during our GTX 90, uh, GTX 960 live stream when Tom was in town on launch day. The second thing you might do is maybe try to test them and overclock them, which is exactly what we did. Uh, it is a very rare occurrence that me as a reviewer gets access to this many of the same card, especially all at the same time, right? So I've reviewed video cards for dozens of years, maybe just one dozen of years, but never have I had more than, you know, a handful, three or four of the same GPU at one time. Uh, we thought it would be interesting to take 13 GTX 960s, uh, five from EVGA, four from ASUS, and four from MSI, and actually do some comparative overclocking testing, uh, not necessarily to pick a winner for MSI is better than ASUS is better than EVGA or whatever, uh, but more uh, to, to get an idea of what the range of overclocking capability you should expect on a GTX 960 if you were to buy one. Now the, the testing here was actually fairly simple and straightforward. We basically hooked up all 13 of these video cards to the exact same test bed, the exact same power supply, even used the same power connector just to make sure there were no differences there. Uh, we were using um, uh, EVGA's Precision X overclocking software, and I did have uh, confirmations from NVIDIA, ASUS, MSI, and EVGA that the software we used would not adversely affect uh, overclocking performance either for or against any individual um, card or vendor's cards, I guess. As overclocking has been with uh, NVIDIA's GPUs for a while, Overclocking is really simple. We used Precision X and we changed GPU clock offset and memory clock offset. And the process was simple. We plug in a card, uh, we start cr increasing GPU clock offset until we get stability issues, go back one step. Then we do the same thing on, on the memory offset. Keep going up until we hit memory uh, uh, instability issues, go back one step, and those are kind of our end results there. And we take that combined GPU uh, and memory offset, run it for, in this case, we actually ran it through Metro Last Light, which is a very easy benchmark for us and that it starts quickly, it ends quickly, and we can set it to run for as long as we want. Um, in order for it to be deemed a stable overclock, it would have to complete five full iterations of that benchmark, which is about 15 minutes. Now, to be honest, that's not very long, and if you're gonna do this for your own gaming purposes, we'd recommend you make that you know, several hours at the very least of a burden to make sure everything's completely stable. But having to get through 13 cards in a short period of time, we wanted to make it a little bit shorter. Here are the results. Uh, our overclocks ranged from, now we're looking at the peak boost clock of these cards, the sustained boost clock of these cards, range from 1501 megahertz up to 1576 megahertz. Uh, the, the lowest one was an MSI, but the highest one was also an MSI card. Again, kind of automatically right away proving that this doesn't really tell you which vendor's cards are necessarily the best. The average or median uh, tended to be about 1542, 1542 megahertz we had uh, 1542 two 1544s and a 1546 in terms of uh, the peak boost clock that we're able to reach during the gaming testing on metro last light uh, temperature wise we noticed something interesting uh, both the msi and the asus cards actually uh, had better coolers in terms of keeping the gpu under 70 c uh, we actually had temperature ranges from 61 degrees celsius up to 75 celsius and the only card to have or the only card actually to have uh, GP temperatures over 70 was the EVGA SSC model that we have here. Now it peaked at 75 C. There was one card that got as hot as 75 degrees, uh, but that's still five degrees under where the default NVIDIA target temperature is at 80 degrees Celsius. So, you know, if, if you're really concerned about temperature, the ASUS and MSI cards uh, did a little bit better in our testing than the EVGA card, but at the end of the day, I, you know, they're, they're, they're all running relatively cool considering we're running at highly overclocked capabilities there. When we did the memory overclocking, there was a much lower range and if you look at the graph, we actually kept the same ordering as we did from the GPU clock. So you can see if there was any relationship between how high a uh, card would overclock at the GPU versus how high it would overclock on the memory. And as it turns out, that's not the case. In fact, the uh, GPU that overclocked to 1542 was the one that reached the highest memory speed, an ASUS card at 2073 megahertz, which actually equates to over 8200 megahertz effective DDR clock rate. 
Uh, and that ranged from uh, like 1927 to 2073 in terms of our, our memory clocks there. So not a huge range in that regard, but um, because it is a 128-bit memory controller on this GPU, it's important to realize that you need to increase memory clock as you increase GPU clock, otherwise you're going to have a bottleneck on the top end with that and, and you won't see the performance improvements that you would otherwise see. We did run one quick performance test with our highest overclock card. I think it was this particular MSI GPU uh, to compare it to the base clock speed of uh, one of these pre-overclock cards. And you get about 12 to 13% average frame rate increase uh, running Metro Last Light at 2560 by 1440, which is right in line with the 12% GPU clock speed increase and the 9 to 10% memory speed increase that you are getting with the overclocked results. So actually right in line with what you would expect, and it's, and it's pretty neat to see that's the case. Um, we would love to be able to tell you, you know, kind of relatively speaking, how well the GM206 GPU overclocks compared to other NVIDIA GPUs or AMD GPUs for that matter, but this is the only time we've ever had access to a baker's dozen of graphics cards based on the same chip at the same time. So we really can't compare it to say how the distribution of the 970 is or the 980 or the R9 285 or the 290 or whatever else, because we're, we'd be basing on a lot of other you know, results and, and a third party output or input rather that we you know, don't really have firsthand. So um, I think it's fair to say, especially if you compare the, the top clock of 1576 megahertz, and that's a sustain. That's not like it got to that once and immediately dropped down. The card was hitting that. That was our best result. If you compare that to the reference typical boost clock of 1178 megahertz, you're talking about a 33% increase in clock speed from that reference spec to our best overclocked result. And even if you take our median overclocked result, you're just talking about 30% better speeds there. So if you are still in the market for a GTX 960 and you are curious about what you should expect for overclocking results or what your overclocking results, are they on the high end or the low end of what people can expect? Based on our testing, you have the data, you have the information, and you can uh, check it out for yourself. If you have one of these cards, you want to leave us your feedback in the video, please feel free to do so. We're on the comments over at PCPer.com. Make sure you go to PCPer.com, read the full write-up on this overclocking testing so you can see pictures of the cards, you can see uh, our, the graphs of our results, as well as the benchmark results that we ran as well. Uh, and uh, hope you enjoyed this dive into the GTX 960 overclock overclockability. Thanks, guys.